Hey everyone, it's Lindsay and I'm here today to share with you one of my favorite techniques, which is creating a scene. However, I'm not going to do any masking today. Sometimes it can take a little bit of time and we just don't have that. So I am starting out with a piece of four inch by five and a quarter white cardstock in my Misty and I'm using the brand new Two Paper Diva stamp set. It's called Let's Play. I've got the little bag that is in the set and I've got that on my Misty on the right hand side in the very bottom corner. I'm stamping it down with Memento Tuxedo Black ink. I won't be using alcohol markers but I will be using my colored pencils and my odorless mineral spirits to blend that out. So I wanted to go ahead and use this black ink so I wouldn't smear it. Now I'm using the marbles that come in the stamp set and I'm just going to place those right inside that bag. Since they are clear stamps you can see right through them and you should have no trouble placing them down as long as you look straight through that stamp. It shouldn't be a problem. I inked that up and then stamped it right down. So now I've got this clear bag with some marbles inside it and it looks pretty realistic and I didn't have to do any masking. Now I want to stamp this ball that is included in the stamp set. This is what I guess would be like a bouncy ball. Um, I'm inking it up with the same black ink. I have placed it just off to the left of that bag and I'm going to stamp it down. Now there are jacks also included in this stamp set and I'm going to stamp three of these. Now, in order to make this scene look more real, if you want some things in front, you need to put those closer to the bottom of the paper. The further back that you want them, the further up the paper you need to put them. So here I wanted this jack, jack to look like it is behind the other two that I'm stamping, so I've moved it up a little bit towards the top of the paper. Not much, just slightly, and that gives the illusion that it's further back behind the other stamps without any masking here. So that is always a plus. I'm just going to stamp this last one and I'm just placing this right down, closing the lid and picking it up. Then I'll ink this up with the same ink I've been using and stamp it down. And then I've got this great little scene of toys ready to go and be colored in and I didn't have to cut out any mask. I didn't have to mask anything off. It's a scene that is ready to go and be colored. So this is a very quick and easy card to do if you need a lot of them at once because all you're doing is stamping, especially using the Misty. You can leave the stamp in place and just pop in a new panel of cardstock and very quickly uh, get these mask scenes ready to, or these unmasked scenes ready to go on your card. Now I also wanted to do quick coloring so I chose my colored pencils and my odorless mineral spirits to blend this out. Now this is not fancy coloring at all. I'm using one color and then I'm just bringing in my blending stump dipped in the OMS off to the right hand side there and I'm just blending this out. Now whether this card would be for a little boy, a little girl, you can change up the colors dependent upon the recipient. I'm keeping mine pretty neutral here, not going too crazy with boy colors or girl colors. So this is going to work for either if I need a boy or a girl birthday card. Moving on to the bag, I wanted to make it look like a clear bag but I needed a little bit of color on it so I chose a very very pale light blue just went around the very top of the bag added a little bit of depth with some darker color along the folds on the top and then around the outside of the bag and right where the marbles are I left a little bit of white space just where the loop is the little tie on it is just to create the illusion of a shine or where the light would hit the bag and that is going to give me a more realistic look. Now for the marbles, I just started grabbing colors out of my colored pencils. I didn't give it a whole lot of thought. I just tried not to place colors right next to each other that I'd already used. And I didn't give much thought to whether a color was a considered a boy or a girl color. I just mixed it up here. And I did use those same colors that I used on the bouncy ball and also the gray on the jack. I brought those into the marbles as well just to carry that across the card and really give it a more cohesive look. On each marble I left just a little very tiny bit of a white spot um, where I didn't put any color down and that is where I thought that the light would hit the marble and give it that shine. 
and once I blend these out that white spot will go away it won't be so stark white but it does add a little bit of depth and a little bit more interest so it looks like they're more realistic and actually gives them a more round appearance the great thing about the scene I've created here is you can change up the colors you're using to color in the images and really change the whole feel of the card. You can use more modern colors like I'm using here and give it a very clean and simple look. You can also use traditional colors and give it a more traditional feel to the card, a more childlike card. You can also use vintage colors, add some distress ink around these and you've got a vintage feeling, more vintage toy feel of the card which is just great so this is a really versatile scene that you can use for a variety of different types of styles so I came in with a very very small blending stump and blended out all the colors in those marbles now the most important part of this scene to me is adding the shadow beneath each one of these items I started out with a very very dark gray and I'm using this the closest to the object so when I put the color down I'm not straying too far away from the actual stamped lines you can see I'm making a horizon line with this color and then I'm just coming back in and shading right underneath those stamps I don't bring it too far out away from those lines and whenever you do this, you need to remember that whenever you come back in and you blend this out with your blending stump and your OMS, it's going to blend the color out even further. So think about where you want the color to end up and keep it away from that just a little bit because these colors do move. And with that OMS, if you put down quite a bit of color like I'm doing here, it's going to move quite a bit, especially if you're using a very creamy colored pencil. When I had my very dark line down, I came in with a lighter color and I really went to town with that one and kind of blended out the darker color with the lighter first. Then I came back in with my darker, just darkened up those shadows a little bit more and then I came in with a very large blending stump that had quite a bit of OMS on it and I blended these two colors out. Now you can see this color is moving around. It does lighten up just a little bit, not much and it really starts to move and pull out away from the harsh lines that I did create and it creates a nice soft shadow underneath all of these stamped images. Now whenever you create a clean and simple card like I am doing here and you have any sort of little black smudge on it it's going to stand out like a sore thumb. I mean it, your eye just is instantly drawn to that and I had a little bit of a black smudge from my ink pad so I just took my sanding block, sanded away that smudge, and then used my eraser to smooth out the paper again. And you wouldn't even know that it had been there. I mean, it just, it looks like it was regular paper and I didn't mess up at all. So that's a great way to save your card. For my sentiment, I grabbed the Banners number no. 3 stamp set from Two Paper Divas. I grabbed the Enjoy Your Day sentiment and just stamped that with black dye ink right to the left of that marble bag that I had stamped. I wanted to give this card a little bit of dimension so I popped up that panel with some foam foam and double sided adhesive and then I'm just going to mount this onto an A2 side folding card base that is white. Now you can choose to fancy up this card a little bit with sequins or even some Winkastella but I kept mine very clean and simple. So that really finished off the card for today. I hope you all enjoyed this video and I hope you guys use this technique as well just to create some fun cards without all the work. As always, I will leave you guys with just a few pictures. For more information on the supply list, you can head to my blog, craftingwellcaffeinated.wordpress.com. The link is in the description box below. Thank you guys so much for watching and happy crafting.